My name is Deirdre Devlin. I'm an executive producer with the BBC in Northern Ireland. I work with the independent film producers and from the moment the documentary or the film or the series is commissioned, I sit down with them, we work out how it's going to look, um, whether it's to make sure that it conforms, the end product is what was commissioned, and to make sure that it complies with all of the things that it needs to comply with, and just to make sure it's a good film. By and large, I, I did enjoy school. I had um, friends that I made very early on who are still my best friends, and uh, we, I still chum around with the same four people that I chummed around with at the age of 11. I kind of wish I'd worked a bit harder. I, I wish I had... You know, um, you know, in, in pub quizzes, I wouldn't be the best one in geography or history. So I wish I'd learnt, listened a bit more. It's it's vocational with me. I I, I um, chose the subjects that I liked, and therefore the subjects that I was good at. So I got good grades. But had I chosen something like science or, or even languages, I mightn't have done so well. My degrees in psychology. Um, it, I wouldn't say it, it totally gears you up for a career in media, but it's, it's not the worst thing to do. By the time I had got to uh, third year at university, I did a four-year degree, I was pretty sure I wanted to be a journalist. I, I kind of wanted to do that years back at school, but hadn't always been encouraged on that path. It wasn't seen as you know, the right sort of career for a girl, we were told, but uh, you know, that's, that's what I had decided to do. So. To get into journalism, you have to have some credentials, otherwise you'll not get past the front door. So I did a postgraduate uh, diploma in journalism in London, and that's very practically based. You have to pass law and various other um, courses to, to pass the, the diploma at the end. So that was the more practical side. And then from there, you, you, you get um, the most important part of those courses are the attachments. So I did my Christmas attachment in BBC Northern Ireland and my Easter attachment at Greater London Radio in London. So they kept me on. Uh, I stayed there until the end of that year, paid off my overdraft, which was great. But uh, I learned a lot. So then I came back to BBC Northern Ireland and I said, look, can I have a job? So I started off, I was very lucky. I, th I came in um, on the day that another freelance had left. So basically, I just stepped into her shoes. Every shift is a test in the early days. If you really make a big mistake, you'll never be asked back. So you have to, you know, do the best job you can and just learn everything. You have to soak up every single bit of information like a sponge and just make sure that every day is the best day you can possibly give. So you start getting more shifts and then things start to snowball after that. My dad uh, worked in British Telecom and uh, th th I was the first person in my parents' generation to go to university. Um, I was very lucky. My dad's not around anymore, he's, he's dead, but mum is still there and uh, very supportive, very loving parents who um, whatever I wanted to do was great. It was outside their experience about university and about journalism and you know my dad was so, but I was a reporter, that's the first thing I, I did when I came into the BBC and my dad was so chuffed to see me on and that was great because that's, you know, that makes it all worthwhile. You can go, that's on your TV, it's great, you know, and uh, I've been in the BBC 20 years, um, 11 years in news and current affairs. Going from um, news and current affairs to factual was a major turning point and it was at one that I even though I got the job and it was a new job and it was a higher grade and um, that was something that kept me awake for weeks running up to leaving news and current affairs and going to factual there's always I think in every reporter's life there is a crossroads do I stay in front of camera or do I make it happen behind the scenes and um, I chose the behind the scenes because that's a whole other world that's fascinating and I was lucky enough to get a job that put me in, in, at the forefront of a brand new series and that was 11 years ago and the series is still running.